Don Chaffee, director of several big pictures such as Jason and the Argonauts, One Million Years B.C., like uh, other members of the team, also regularly worked for television, directed most of the early Prisoner episodes and all the location work in Port Merion. I was about to do another feature over in Ireland and Pat suddenly came along and said he'd got this idea and I said, great, good, take it, you know, that's fine, do what you like with it. And he said, no, I'd like you to direct um, uh, the first episodes to sort of set a style or whatever you like. And I said, great, no, no, no. And I just refused point blank and I went off over to Ireland and um, Pat and my wife, my late wife and daughter, we were all good friends at that time and uh, we still are, but I mean, we're friendly family-wise. And so he grabbed my daughter and gave her these scripts and said, get your father to read these. And uh, my daughter kept on trying, and then finally she read them herself. And she came up with the, uh, she said, you've got to read these. She said, um, she said um, people, people are just going to, uh, she said, it's, they're compulsive, they're going to be compulsive viewing. And she said, I reckon you'll have 11 million people lo loving to hate you every Sunday night if you make these. It was so intriguing me, I started to read them and called Pat, and Pat came across to Ireland where I was directing a picture with Don Murray. And uh, we, I agreed to do it. Pat's not an easy person, uh, as you probably know, to get on with, but he, at least he knows what he wants. And I have sort of some clear-cut ideas too. And uh, so, you know, by sitting down, and it, uh, there were some bitter arguments, but that's not here you or know, there. I mean, out of it came what I think is probably one of the best television series made, you know. Yes, but what about those first location problems? Like the, the big white balloon? Uh, Rover. Rover, 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 yeah. Rover, ah, yes. Rover was designed, it was a very intricate piece of machinery which was supposed to do practically everything, go underwater as in submarine, um, come from underwater as hovercraft onto the sand and if necessary, um, climb the side of a house. It came the Tuesday morning when we had to work with it. It was still a very laboring piece of machinery, it went into the water and for some reason didn't appear to have any desire to uh, emerge. So we sort of left it there and had to think of other things. So we're standing there and we're due to shoot sequences which contain our rover character, this menacing thing, and we didn't have one. And we're pondering what to do and we're looking up at the heavens and uh, thinking, I was, I was standing there in this little street in Port Merion with Bernard Williams, our production manager, and we were both looking up racking our brains and we saw this little white thing way up in the sky and i said what's that and he said it's a balloon of some kind or it's sort of balloon he said uh, probably uh, meteorological there's a station that is nearby somewhere so i said can you get any of them and he said i'll try and he went away note one of the most striking and memorable images ever seen in a television series is the result of on location desperation due to the failure of an original prop. <laughs> Beginning to like this. Yes, um, now, Pat Jackson, veteran filmmaker, began in the GPO film unit in the 30s, met McGowan 10 years before The Prisoner when he gave him his first screen test ever. Directed four episodes of The Prisoner, including Schizoid Man. Man in a suitcase, I think it was. And uh, David Tomlin came over to see me and, and no, I think, no, I can't quite remember. I think Pat, yes, Pat asked me to come over to, to Well Street, MGM, and said I got a proposition that might interest you. Then I went over to see him, and he showed me the location stills of Port Marion and the rough outline of the story, which wasn't absolutely clear then. And he said, would you be interested? I said, yes, I think I would, Pat, very interested indeed. But then I got involved in the Danger Man thing, in the uh, Man in a Suitcase thing. And then he sent me a script. Um, and as one does, when one sent a script through the post, you hope it's going to be nice and that you can do it. In all conscious, you can do it. And I tore it in the envelope and started to read Schizoid Man. And I read it through in one session. I was absolutely thrilled. I didn't know what the hell it was all about, mind you, but I thought it was fascinating. Absolutely wonderful idea. Very interesting. I rang him up at once and said, Pat, I'd love to do it when. And so we, you know, the schedule was worked out. It was about 10 days' time. So down to Elstree I went for the first day's shooting. There was Pat ready uh, and of course one had to have one's plan worked out you know we had to get about five and a half to six minutes cut film every day so you were doubling the cut film that you would do in a feature yet the quality didn't have to drop at all it had to look as good as a feature even though we had to get twice as, mu as much and off we went and uh, that was successfully done and then I did the other three one 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 took the script, you read it, analysed it, 
uh, worked out your shooting plan, uh, how the artists were to move, and uh, then you got on the floor and quickly blocked in the scene, and everybody was happy and comfortable, off you went. And then the usual cover shots. And uh, no, and I had no, no brief at all. You've just analyzed it as a conductor would a score, and uh, off you go. Oh, I'd love to be able to say, yes, I saw the significance of this series and that it was going to be the prestige series and you could get a PhD at university writing a treatise on it. Absolute rubbish. I didn't at all. I took it as a job and I was thankful that one could do it in, with conscience and do it with pride. and think.